Hello grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson seven of the influential psychology experiments unit. My favorite unit so far, I think. And this one is titled learned helplessness. Um, yeah, maybe you can tell about what it's about from the title, but it's essentially learning that, you know, you can't do anything to change your situation, that you're helpless. Um, so kind of what happened was this guy stumbled into this and then devised an experiment to check it out more. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go, let's get into it. Uh, first of all, what is learned helplessness? Cause again, it's more of a general topic and not so much a specific experiment anymore. Uh, though the, uh, the experiment we're going to talk about, um, kind of started this off or looked into this more deeply. So learned helplessness occurs when an animal is repeatedly subjected to an aversive stimulus that it cannot escape. So animal could be humans as well. This definitely, definitely applies to humans and children. So if you're uh, subjected to a bad thing that you cannot get away from, eventually the an animal will stop trying to avoid the stimulus and behave as if it is utterly helpless to change the situation. If there's nothing you can do to get away or to make it stop, what is the point in trying? Even when opportunities to escape are presented, this learned helplessness might prevent any action. So if you've ever seen a TV show and there's, uh, you know, a hot, uh, there's someone that's been, you know, abducted and uh, they've been held for a really long time and you see that there's an opportunity for them to get away, but they've learned that no matter what they do, they can't, they can't change their situation, so they don't take that opportunity. And you go, what? How could they not go? How could they not run? How could they not ask that guy for help? They've learned helplessness. They've learned that nothing they do will change their situation and that prevents any future action from changing their situation. So in 65, 1965, Martin Seligman, Seligman, not sure, and his colleagues were doing research on classical conditioning, essentially on learning. In the case of Seligman's experiment, he would ring a bell and then give a dog a light shock. So very, very similar to Pavlov's experiment, but kind of way meaner. Uh, and after a number of times, as you would expect, the dog reacted to the shock even before it happened, as soon as the dog heard the bell. So the dog would hear the bell and get ready for the shock. Even though there was no shock, he had learned to associate the bell and then the shock coming soon after that. Seligman then put each dog into a crate that was divided down the middle with a low fence. The dog could see and jump over the fence if necessary, and this is what it looked like. This is obviously a way cuter version of what it would look like, but here's the dog. This side has shocks, this side has no shocks, a small wall that the dog is able to jump over if they would like. The floor on one side of the fence was electrified, but not on the other side of the fence. And what Seligman did was he put the dog on the electrified side and administered a light shock. And what he expected, so after he had you know, already shocked these dogs, he expected the dog to jump onto the non-shocking side of the fence. So he expected the dog to go from here over to here if there was a shock here and none here, right? That would make sense, get away from the shock. The dogs, however, instead had learned that there was nothing they could do to get away from the shock. There would be a bell, there would be a shock, and there was nothing they could do to stop it. So instead the dogs lay down. It was as, as though they had learned from the first part of the experiment that there was nothing that they could do to avoid the shocks. So they gave up. They didn't even try to jump over the wall. They just accepted that the shocks were going to happen. And this is a very, very excellent picture here to scale too, most likely. So you got Sligman, the dog and the wall and this side has the shocks and this side does not. The dog just laid there, took the shocks because they figured that there was nothing that they could do. To investigate this phenomenon, the researchers devised another experiment. So in the one group, kind of like a control group, the dogs were strapped into a harness and then were released. There was no shocks, no nothing bad to them happened, just strapped into a harness and then released. In group two, the dogs were placed in the same harness but were subjected to electrical shocks. These electrical shocks in group two could be avoided by pressing a panel with their noses. Essentially, they had the ability to stop the shocks if they figured out how to do it. They, they could end it, they had the power. And in group three, the dogs received the same shocks as those in group two, except in this group, they were not able to control the shock. 
They were not able to turn it off. For the Doze Dogs in, group, in the third group, the shocks seemed to be completely random and completely out of their control. Therefore, they were helpless against those shocks. The, uh, Selen, uh, he wanted to, sorry, Seligman wanted to then see what would happen if they put them in the same box as the small dog from before. So the dogs were placed in a shuttle box, that's what that box was called, and the dogs from the first and second group quickly learned that jumping the barrier eliminated the shock. They were able to, they, they were still helpful. They were able to help themselves because they had not learned helplessness. The dogs from the third group, however, made no attempts to get away from the shocks. They had already learned that nothing they did would stop the shocks from happening. Therefore, there was no point in trying to get away from them and they accepted them. Due to their previous experience, they had developed a cognitive expectation that nothing they did would prevent or eliminate the shocks. So they accepted them. So it's a very complex idea. Sometimes people in abusive situations, you know, um, have the same kind of experience or nothing they do changes anything, so they stop trying. Um, I'm going to ask you to you know, look into this a little bit more in the questions that are you know, at the usual assignment. Check out these videos, uh, very interesting videos that give you a good idea um, about um, some of extending things and also give you some information about some of the important terms that I want you to look up. So these videos are definitely useful to watch. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I will see you soon.